Hey guys, in this video I'm going to grind some hands in the 25NL Russian cash on GG. As I go, I'll be sharing my thought process and revealing my adjustments when playing. And I'm going to give you some insights on how to maximize your profits uh, in these stakes. You probably don't know me yet, so let me introduce myself real quick. My name is Matija, I'm a Bluff the Spot coach from Serbia. I've been playing poker professionally for around 4 years but started taking it a lot more seriously around two years ago. And these days I mainly play 1k, 500 and a bit of 5k. We're going to jump right into the action in a second, but let me make an important announcement first. If you ever thought about getting your hands on the sought after ultimate course by MMA Sherdog, now is the time to do so. In a week from today, we will close the doors on the course and it won't be sold anymore. So this is your last chance. We decided to do that to free up more coaching capacity and light the spotlight on a brand new flagship program for aspiring poker professionals the Bluff the Spot Academy. But as you probably know, today is Black Friday, so we've decided to give you one last chance to get the ultimate course that includes both the high stakes course and the Preflow Bible 4.0 by MMA Sherdog for a fat 100% discount. Yes, you heard that right. Until the 3rd of December, you'll have the chance to get the course for absolutely free. Check out the link in the description below for instructions on how to claim a copy. All right, and now uh, let's jump right into the action. Okay, we're going to defend here even verse 3x. Our hand is good enough. Uh, here, depending on how his preflop range looks like, you could have a C betting range. I'm just going to check a bunch. <clears throat> Uh, on this turn, we can go either way with our hand. I'm actually going to check this time. And here with um, the King Jack, I think I... Mm. The problem with this hand is you block so much. I, I'm going to try to check and go for a check raise. Um, we're going to be calling King Jack here. That's a cool river for our hand, I guess. Um, here with the king jack, we're gonna go for check raise. Here we see a small size. <laughs> I mean, I guess we beat. I guess we beat uh, some jack x, but he could have ace jack also. I don't know what's with this size, to be honest. I don't think it's a bluff very often, but I also don't think it's. It's too strong either. Could be like the nuts or kind of weak. I'm gonna go for a check raise, like 4x or something. I'm gonna defend here once, and here on a queen, I'm gonna block. Oh, he has king queen. Okay. I guess we we do block that, but I guess we kind of value owned ourselves. And here we got in a nice value bet. This one's interesting. I don't know. I feel like when he uses that size, I guess it depends on your opponent a lot, but I have no experience with these guys. So, yeah. I guess if you see people doing that a lot, you can start uh, raising for thin value less. We trip it here, but versus cutoff. I uh, see, but half pot for basically range. Um, here with king queen suited, we get four bet. Um, should be a call in theory, although <laughs> twenty five and now is kind of nitish from what I remember. We're going to be bluffing the Ace River. Ah, uh, let's call. <laughs> nice. It's supposed to be a call in theory, but in practice, I think people won't forbid enough in position on 25NL. 
I'm gonna call here. I'm gonna stack off with him on any flop. Um, so yeah, um, we're gonna come in with a squeeze there. Here we will be check calling. It's a nice turn. Here with eights, just gonna shove um, for protection. And here we're gonna call the sixes. Um, here on with king queen, I think we can go with a block with this hand, which is a pretty interesting play. Or we could also check. Don't think jamming is gonna make a lot of sense. I want to bet like quarter pot, so like nineteen point eight or something. And here we're, we'll just fold versus his bet. Wow, he has jacks and he has kings. Wow. He called our open, then he got a pretty cool spot to squeeze, and he just called again. And he folds. <clears throat> When you have these hands that block everything in terms of calling range, you either want to check and let him bluff, or you want to use those hands sometimes as uh, traps in your blocking range. So you have some super strong hands as well. Because when you block, the fact that you... When you use a block sizing, the fact that you block the king and the queen matters less than if you're jamming. Because if you jam, he needs to call you with... Uh, with worse, sorry, call it with something on the board, which you block. <clears throat> I'm gonna start stabbing small here. Um, here we have tens. <clears throat> gonna be calling. It's going to be interesting to see what size he's going to use here. He's going to check. Okay, that's actually a, a decent play that I would not be expecting. Um, let's go for a small stab. He goes for a check call. Yeah, I think versus uh, versus that line, I think we just can easily value bet this. Even if he check jams turn, I think we have to call. Um, and I'll just go for a bigger size. Here we can raise, we can call. Um, I'm gonna call this time. Usually when you have a pair that's pretty decent, you can ask yourself, what would you do if you didn't have the flash draw? And since you have like middling pair, good kicker, you're most likely going to call. Um, now we're going to do a bit of both. I'm afraid that these guys won't be bluffing enough. So it's kind of easier to force them to make calling mistakes than to force them to make bluffing mistakes. So trapping should be a thing, but um, I don't think you need to be uh, too worried about it. You should be trapping sometimes, but you should also try to get um, try to get them to make calling mistakes. I don't think he's folding any two pair or any like um, king x of hearts type hands and the fact that we have the king and the nine may means we block a bunch of hearts so if you're gonna trap that would be a pretty interesting hand to do it with here i'm gonna start over betting because on this turn we just have such a big advantage um i'm actually gonna fold here with the nine the thing is it's a monotone board also the king is good for us he he, sh I think even like on 25 NL, people are aware of that. So when they start betting on the cards that are really good for you, and the board was uh, good for him on the flop, I think they're gonna under bluff a decent amount. Checking range here. 
Um, I think we should call once versus this size. We have two overs. We could have the best hand. Um, we also have a heart. We'll fold the times three way. And here I'm going to check again. I don't think you need to uh, bluff this. I think we have showdown. Um, unless he was stabbing like an ace high for some reason, then check him back. Um, he bets the flop. Then he checks back this turn. Now he bets three quarters. So what is he wrapping? He's wrapping like a four. He's kind of wrapping a four, to be honest. I guess he could have some check back six X type hands, maybe like eight, four, seven, four. I think I'm going to call this. Seems very, I don't believe him. Yeah. He wasn't wrapping much. And it's pretty easy to overbluff if you overstab the flop. Here, um, we call preflop, flop goes to check, check. We're gonna check again with this hand. We should have some like middling queen X in a range. Okay, so for so so far we've seen uh, these small bets in position and it's been pretty Good value hands, but I'm gonna check raise again. I just think that it's, it's very weak on average. I think the king queen hand we saw is uh, more of an exception to the rule than the actual rule. Um, okay, this might be a recreational. I would mostly trip at this. But he's using a bigger sizing. But I want to call because I think this guy might be a, a recreational player. Now I'm going to check back. Um, here we're going to 3 bet this time, we're going to be checking back the 9s. Um, I'm thinking about what happens if he checks. I don't think I want to bluff this, to be honest. I can see some hands that we beat, like weaker pocket pairs, like 7x, 8x. I think we can bluff for other stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's way too loose from the 100 guns, so. i mark that guy as a recreation. Most likely, or a misclick or something. So if you see it here, we got called. This is actually a pretty cool hand to bluff it because you block ace 10 and 10 9. Whoops. And if you are going to see that turn, I think like an overbed sizing is the way to go. We also block ace x of hearts that are going to call the turn. And if he does call and reverse a heart, we can use this hand as a bluff. It's a pretty cool hand on that board. We got called here. I think Sibet thinks small in position. I mean, you can go half pot, you can go smaller. You can probably even go bigger. But I think going really small is cool because people won't defend properly. The lower you go in stakes, the worse they'll defend, basically. As in not call enough and also, um, like, not raise enough. Raise this time here. I'm gonna see it's just range here. Eight seven can be a pretty cool buffing hand on a turn. I think you want to split between uh, like three quarters and an overbet sizing. And I'd rather overbet when I have a queen or a king. And use the eight seven in the smaller sizing uh, bluffing range. I'm gonna check back this turn with the tens. 
Yeah, I I don't see a reason to do anything else than just check. And he has a queen. Good job. You win, sir. Here we got call called in the small blind. We'll be mixing this flop, but I'm gonna see bet a nine because he's a recreational. I'll, I'll just won't even be checking back nine x to be honest versus a recreational player. <clears throat> If he was some sort of rag that's called calling in the small blind, I would start mixing between um, betting and checking back my whole range, and checking back would include some 9x uh, as well. Gonna be opening here. Defending the ace 9. Gonna be calling um, at least once. Um, I don't see a reason to block. I don't think. Um, ah, actually, I I guess he has ten x in his range, but he also has nine x and. Uh, Yeah, actually, I'm gonna block. Uh, we have the best nine. Um, so actually, I like the block. Here we three bet color versus EP. I'm gonna see bet one third here. Yeah. Oh no, he has 10, never mind. <laughs> I guess he has 10x also. Um, so here, with the ace five, we. 3 bet, we got called. Um, I'm gonna check back this turn. You wanna bet a lot on this turn, but I also, um, you don't wanna bet too much. So we can use this hand as a bluff on the river. Uh, actually, on this river, maybe not as much, but yeah. Uh, here I didn't have time to think. Ah, uh, we should buff this. We don't have any showdown. We're gonna fold the ace five. And I guess now that we have a deuce, I guess we have some showdown, so I'll just check. But yeah. I would have preferred to bluff this on the turn. Um the time I'm very used to by now, uh to rack tables and the time banks on rushing cash are really like uh really low. So you gotta make decisions really quickly. Although it's a bit tougher if you have to keep talking as well. Okay, we're gonna three bet the king queen. King 10 is a mix from here, but I guess if you see a Chinese guy, it's a pure open in the big blind. Um, here we defended fives three way. Flop goes check, check, check. I, I'm just going to fold. I was going to say just check folding. I think is the way to go. Okay, guys. Um, let's play one hand on each table. I guess that's just all going to be folds unless this goes blind versus blind. Yeah. Um, that has been my short play and explain on 25 and L. Thank you guys um, for joining and see you next time. Bye.